But before he comes back, there's got to be a great move of God, and it comes through you and me. You understand that? So I want to encourage you today to begin to consider some things that Jesus has done and then begin to make some decisions that you're going to walk in obedience to it. You know, we get too hung up on leaders. For a while, I kind of got hung up because I was so upset that the church could allow our leaders to be voted in. By the way, you better get ready. August the 24th, we've got a primary, and you better get some leaders coming in with morals, godly principles, and get out and vote them in. And don't, go, don't vote against your Christian moral right. That's what happened in the last big election. We can't allow that. We need to learn our lesson. We need to understand that we need to change some things, and we can do it if we would understand who we are in Christ. If we could understand that God's delegated authority to us. So many people in churches don't realize that you can make a difference. They think they just come to church, give their tithes, give their offerings, go home. Everything's copacetic. They lived about 75, 85 years old. They die, go to heaven, and that's it. That's not it. What's it is you find your place as you get before God. You begin to seek God. And like the Apostle Paul, you press in to understand the hope, the high call on your life. So many people are looking to other peoples to give a confirming word or some kind of word to tell them what they're supposed to do. God's the one that calls you. God will tell you what to do, but you can't hear him unless you get in his presence. Y'all hearing me? I don't want anybody to die and go to heaven without being fulfilled in these last few years by selling out 100% to the will of God and the will of God on your life because it's the greatest thing that can ever happen to a human being, you see. And sure, the, the culture is that old is out. Let me tell you something. When they want money, old is in. Old is in. God said, "You, when you get a little gray hair, it's a sign of wisdom. Old is in. Old takes care of the young. Old teaches the young. The young don't teach the old. We got to understand that's why God's raised up the baby boomer generation for us to take a stance and a stand. And we need to lay down our living life like some of our brothers has laid down their natural life to see the church comes alive and operates in the power and the presence of Almighty God. You see, it's been long enough that we get a little three-point sermon and a little bit, oh, don't get over the top and silent, and Jesus is a lover. Jesus is a lover that'll let your nation go to hell if you don't do something. <clears throat> Thank you. So what I'm saying in here I've got a few things for us to look at and a few things to set our priorities on because the natural economy is in another kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom of God has come to earth. And it also said that kingdom, the government of that kingdom was on his shoulders. And he said when you accept Christ in the new birth, takes place you enter into a spiritual kingdom that can govern natural kingdoms you understand me we've got to come we need to get with God we need to ask him reveal to us how do we do this how do we go forward and he will you see the reason the church has been so displaced over the years is because there's no unity and harmony because everybody is so self-seeking God says, seek him. Let the love of God that's in him manifest in you and bring unity to the body so the commanded blessing can come upon you and me. Now, are y'all listening to me? 
So what I want to say this morning, I want us to consider some things that Jesus has said and done so that you could walk in victory. Yeah, all of our lives have had catastrophe. All of our lives we've had circumstances. And some of you are living in horrible circumstances now that can change. There's things happening to some of you you can't even tell your closest friends. But let me tell you something. you got a friend that's closer than a brother you can talk to. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's got the answer, you see. And the thing about it is, he's going to be speaking to you this morning, you see. We want to consider some things. In Hebrews, the first chapter. He said, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways God spoke to the old, the forefathers, by the prophets. In the Old Testament, he was always speaking through and by the prophets. Is that true? Listen to what he says. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time. He made, he produced, he built, operated, and arranged them in order. Verse 3. This is talking about Jesus. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. He is the light being. He is the outraying or radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining. Now listen to this. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Man. See, God ultimately, yes, is in charge and has authority over all things. He keeps the universe in order by the word of his power. But he delegated to this speck in the universe called the earth to man to govern under the government of heaven. We keep trying to give our ownership back to him, and he's given it to us. He said, I've given you authority over all serpents, over all demonic activity, over all things. Take charge in the name of the Lord. I was listening to something the other day this guy was saying. And he was saying, people cry out, oh, God, why are you letting all these horrible things happen? I've heard it myself. If God was such a God, why would he allow this to happen in Somalia? Why would he allow this to happen here? Why would he allow that to happen there? And all of a sudden, the voice of God said, I was going to ask you the same question. You all must believe in the Bible or you wouldn't be here this morning. So when Jesus said, I've given you authority in the earth, I'm delivered, I've given you the keys to hell, death, and the grave, I've given you the right to speak in my name, and that demons scream and cry out, they flee, they run. What happened? I'm just asking a question. Some of you have been serving God 50 years. I've known God a lot longer than that. But what I'm saying is this, it's time for this season to let Isaiah 48 be true in our life. Isaiah 48 said this, in the last season, I couldn't do what I'm fixing to do in this season. He said, I'm going to do a brand new thing that I've never done in the past. And he's going to do that in this season because we're in a season of new alignment. We're in a season of divine order coming back to the church. And we're in a season that revelation is going to open up like never before. Do you understand me? But you must believe that. Become a genuine 
believer to allow that to happen inside of you because the first thing a revival is going to take place and shouting and dancing.